You know what, this video doesn't even deserve the intro. You're, wondering, you're probably wondering, why is this video out later than it usually is? I'm usually pretty good, I get them out within, a, first I would say the hour after the game maximum. I didn't want to. I was like, you know what, screw this. I ate my dinner, I relaxed with my girlfriend, we watched a Christmas movie, getting in that holiday spirit. I didn't care, I had to cheer up. I didn't want to just scream into a mic about how we're the definition of insanity, how we suck, how we're inconsistent. I didn't want to do any of that. You know why I didn't want to do any of that? Because I do that all the time for the last two... You know what? I've done that almost last two seasons. Three seasons I've been covering it since the Calgary loss in the COVID Bowl. This team has no inconsistency. No consistency. They've got no effort. They've got no strength. They've got no leadership. And I know Blake Wheeler was out and probably out for a long time after that nasty injury that he suffered in Vancouver. I was there. I saw it. Not pretty. That doesn't matter because when your captain goes out, you're supposed to have good leaders. We thrive ourselves off of the good room, the leaders that we have, that veteran presence. Nathan Bull, you, we, we, don't, we, need, we don't need him on the bench. We need him playing fourth line minutes at a forward position. David Gustafson doesn't even exist. We don't need David Gustafson. You know why? Because David Gustafson's a child, and children don't belong in the NHL. You need to play manly minutes in the AHL and build yourself up. If you get called up, even if you're a big guy like Gustafson, you're going to get killed. Milan Lucic is going to come out there and break your back. That's why Vili Hinola doesn't play, don't you know? Vili Hinola is a child. Children don't belong in the NHL. This is a veteran's game, a veteran's world. Paul Maurice knows best. He would know. He's got the most losses out of any coach in NHL history. That's why. You know why he has that many losses? Because he's got so many wins too. He's been around for so long. He's developed so many good winning teams and had veterans and lost and won. He knows what's up. Paul Maurice knows what's best. I hope you realize that I'm being sarcastic. Start booing, by the way, guys. I don't live in Winnipeg, you guys know that. I'm the away fan, as lots of you are. I've got lots of fans that watch this channel that live all across this great platform and world. I don't know why I said platform, but you know what I mean. That watch me on this platform from around the world. There we go, I'll restructure that. That are Jets fans, that are hockey fans alike. For all of us that aren't in Winnipeg, that can't go to the Canada Life Center, it's always going to be MTS, but I'll be correct now. Can you please boo? I don't like throwing jerseys on the ice. I think sometimes it's cringe, especially when the Leafs fans do it. I think that it can be just a really toxic kind of thing sometimes, and it's a waste of money. Someone just take out an old fake they have and throw it on the ice, please. Or hell, maybe throw out a Vander Kane jersey if you still got one clicking in your closet, because we know that's not worth more than 20 bucks. Do something. Boo them every night. How, how, how are you okay with this? We aren't even in a fucking playoff spot right now. We are spent to the cap. One of the only teams spent to cap that aren't in a playoff spot right now. That's not a team taking on cap with draft picks trying to tank. And don't give me the Minnesota Wild or a dominant team and all this stuff because they are. We've played the Wild twice and one of those times we lost 7-1. This is just, this is, this is on coaching. This is on the organization. This is on the players. This is on everything. You don't lose games to Buffalo. You don't lose games to Arizona where you have 47 shots on net against a no-name goalie, just like you did tonight on a guy who I'm, I can't even remember his name, even though it's one of the coolest-sounding name names I've ever heard. So shout-out to you, Buffalo, for having a wicked goalie with an awesome name. But nonetheless, his first career win tonight, and you made him look like a god. You don't reward youthful players. You don't reward anyone that plays good in your lineup because you got to get the main guys going. Mark Shifley's got to score. Mark Scheifele's a great player, right? Mark Scheifele's a great leader, right? He's Blake Wheeler's pupil. He's learned from the best in the league, right? Because Blake Wheeler's the best leader, we've all been saying for a long time. Where is the product? Where's the leadership? Josh Morrissey, right? He's supposed to be the leader on the back end, the guy that's been with this team the longest now. He made some of the worst pinches I've seen in his career, and that's saying something against Buffalo. You want to hear a quote from Paul Maurice, ladies and gentlemen, from the post game, And this is word for word. We skated hard for about 15 to 20 minutes. Last time I checked, Paul, it's a 60-minute game. So, yeah, let's praise 20 minutes of working hard because that's what this team needed, right? You know, we, were, we skated, we started bad. You definitely did that, but you picked it up in that first period, right? Let's say you skated well there for about 10 minutes. Oh, right there, half of the 20 that you're talking about. Where's the rest of the 40 minutes, 50 minutes? Where is it? This is a joke. This team is so pathetic. H how do you go from playing against one of the hottest teams in the NHL, a team that's won five in a row tonight, they beat Columbus in Vancouver, shout out to them, 
Five in a row since their entire team was stripped of all management coaching, and their players that we were talking had no spark left and needed to be traded look like awesome players that have got their mojo back. Hmm? That's a team that had the coach in green that I still liked, but now it's very evident he lost the room. He lost his players' confidence. Paul Maurice has done the exact same thing. He doesn't say go in there and say anything motivational. He relies on Mark Shifley to do that. I don't mama in. I'm not in the room. I can't tell you what he says, but it's evident because if there was anything being said in that locker room that had any type of emotional, impactful value there would be a better performance on the ice. The reason why I'm wearing the Bomber jersey isn't just because they've won back-to-back -back Great Cups, even though that's awesome and amazing for the city of Winnipeg and great because that team is well-coached, well-built, and everything. Winnipeg no longer wants to be mediocre. We were mediocre and had a losing streak for a 20 years losing streak, I believe, in the CFL with the Great Cup drought. Maybe even longer than that. And now we've went back-to-back -back and we didn't accept mediocrity. We strive to be better. Yeah, then we could say they got lucky, but they tried to be better. They tried to win the most dominant team in the league that still suffered and was losing in that Grey Cup, put it together and came back because they have heart and, ha and play for everyone in that room. It's evident when you watch the way they celebrate, the way they act, and these are guys that play in the CFL. I love the CFL. I know a lot of you guys do too, but let's not act like it's not the baby league to the NFL, even the baby league to college. These guys are making a lot of money, and they're out there playing their heart out, everything for the city of Winnipeg that has less than a million people living it. And for themselves, you don't see any of that on the Winnipeg Jets because Paul Maurice doesn't need to. He doesn't need to see him playing for his teammates when he's got Paul Mark Shifley out there playing like crap the entire night. Sending him out. I'm going to pull out the minutes because I actually want to read it, even though it blinds me every time I take a look at it. I want to go through the minutes tonight. I want to show you this. Blake Wheeler goes down with a horrible injury. He's out long-term. Your captain who had one of his best games in two years. Let's see the leadership tonight. Hmm? Let's see who played the most minutes on offense tonight. That's Buffalo. <laughs> Right here we go. Andrew Kopp, ladies and gentlemen, 21 minutes of ice time. Great, because he's not been struggling. 16 minutes from Adam Lowry. Hmm? Dominic Toninato, who was a plus one in this game, actually was pretty decent because the fourth line is always decent under, and under usually under eight minutes of ice time. Let me remind you, Dominic Toninato has more goals than Blake Wheeler on this season, and Blake Wheeler was averaging 22. See anything wrong with that picture, ladies and gentlemen? And don't give me what he needed to get Blake Wheeler going, and when he finally got going, he got injured. That's bad luck. Blake Wheeler has his moments and had looked a lot better the last, say, six games before that injury. Had he put everything together? No, but the line itself wasn't playing that good. But he, he had his moments. For sure he did. Uh, you know I love Blake Wheeler. I'm just critical of where he's used. 25 fucking minutes for Mark Shifley tonight. Part of my language, a minus two. Oh, plus minus doesn't mean anything, right, Jake? Yeah, the fool cares. Power play tonight. Abysmal. Abysmal power play. 0 for 3 on the power play. Hey, we killed off a penalty kill. We were 50% on the penalty kill, boys. Go out drinking, be responsible, and have some fun, right? Or whatever the Logan Stanley quote is. This team is pathetic. Nothing will change. Nothing will. It's obvious that no one has any care on this team because you don't lose games to Buffalo when you're well-rested and make Buffalo look like a team fighting for a decent playoff run. Buffalo dominated us tonight. We lost by two goals, and none of them were empty netters. You can't justify this. You Just like you can't justify the loss to the the, the the freaking Coyotes, you can't justify the loss to the Canucks when before the coaching change was made. You can't justify any of this stuff. This comes down to mediocrity. The th overall arcing theme of the Winnipeg Jets. It's not the definition of insanity. It's, it's mediocrity. We'll never get better. We'll never improve because they don't care about improving. It's evident. You, they don't reward anyone that plays good with good ice time. If Guinea Sveshnikov, and I come back to this argument all the damn time, has been a better overall player two-way than almost anyone in the top six. Minus probably Pierre-Luc Dubois and Mark Schleifle for three games, maybe four games. How do you justify that? Nikolai Ehlers has no, no confidence out there right now. Every single time anyone gets into the zone, they make an extra pass or they fumble the puck and lose it. They're trying to do way too much and try to look way too damn cute. What happened to crashing the net? The Winnipeg Jets used to be so damn good at crashing the net. I see Adam Lowry try to make more skilled passes than him actually getting to the front of the net and picking out the garbage goals that he used to be good at. Like, Adam Lowry just got that nice contract boost from him, saw the term, and is now fucked off. I'll have to be a centerman that takes that hits a little bit and makes takes face offs mediocrely. Mediocrely isn't a word. I can't even care anymore. I don't care. My effort in these videos, I'm done. I'm not obviously done. You guys know I'll have to cover them. 
but like why should I be dedicated to my computer chair writing down all these notes trying to give you guys great ana analysis when the Jets just don't care and then I have to go and listen to guys like freaking Kenny <laughs> Sean Reynolds and uh and Ken Weeb after the shows and the Illegal Curve show Illegal Curve actually was pretty damn honest tonight and I respect them for that but like Ken Weeb on the Kenny and Rennie show he was like well you need a guy like Christian Veselainen to step up, you know, Veselainen's been here for what, four years now, three years, he's got to step up, Christian Veselainen, in that time, I believe, has played like 42 games in three years, but he's the guy that needs to step up, and that's just one thing I'm nitpicking from that, and I'm not ripping on Ken Weeb, but that's just the overall arcing feeling that I have with the Winnipeg Jets narrative when it comes to the big guys that have a lot of an audience that listens to them and bases their opinions on the Jets from what they see and what these guys tell them. You, you you can't look me in the eye and say you need a guy like this line to step up if we know he does when he's playing like 12 minutes every damn night on the third line and never gets real opportunities and looks. And when he does, and when he has had actual looks and played decent, he's scored. This line had been in the league for what, three years, right, kid? Four years? He just scored his first goal this year because he's never been given proper opportunity. David Gustafson's the same way. We don't use them because Nathan Beaulieu is the best fit on this team to be a fourth line. It's a joke. They would if, if, if that's if that isn't evident to you that they care more about veteran leadership and the veteran presence of this team than enforcing a youth movement, then you've got no then then you've got no brain. I'm sorry to be rude, but it's the truth. You can't look me in the eye. And I know you know you you can't l l literally anyway. But imagine you're sitting here talking with me. I'm looking right at the camera. You can't tell me in the comment section right now that Nathan Beaulieu, as a fourth line guy, playing what? Let's see his exact minutes tonight. Nathan Beaulieu tonight playing. Okay, they still have him listed as a defenseman. Three minutes of ice time. Three minutes of ice time. That Nathan Bully for three minutes on the bench is more valuable than calling up anyone on the moose. Anybody. That should be insanity to you. We're playing with... Sh sh on, we're literally playing with a short roster because Paul, he's gotta play. That's the guy we plug in for three fucking minutes. Someone at the next game, if they're losing badly like this to a mediocre team or they're getting blown out or whatever it is, please... Bring a jersey, wear a jersey that is not good, a jersey that's stained, and one you don't care about, you barely fit, and throw it on the damn ice. It's up to you guys in the building now. True North care so much about their fans, show that the fans are done. Seriously. And I know I said don't do that because I don't like jerseys being thrown on the ice, but how else do you get a message to an organization that cares so much about what the fans say, but don't care about when the fans actually have feedback and improvement that they want to see with this team? What, do we keep Paul Maurice around until the trade deadline where we're out of the playoffs still possibly or basically a wildcard team just on that bubble? And what, we fire him then? Trade Andrew Kopp for a first round pick at the deadline if we're lucky? That's the plan? Spend it to the cap? Waste a year of all these guys' contracts for what? For loyalty to a coach? It's your fault that you gave him an extension when you should never have even done so and let him walk out the door and rechange this team's identity. You've accepted mediocrity, True North. You've accepted it. This is what you embrace. You throw this shit out. You charge people $200 plus a ticket for the lower bowl to watch them lose to the Buffalo fucking Sabres that are 9, 15, and 4. And the Winnipeg Jets, ladies and gentlemen, 13, 10, and 5. We're getting close to 500, and I bet your ass by the end of this year, we will be a team either below 500 or at 500. I will bet you all the money in my savings. Our next game is on Friday against the Washington Capitals. They'll be have some rest in there. They better fucking show up because Washington's been a hot team and Ovi will tear that defense apart. And I've gotten really not a lot of faith in them. This video went on for 13 minutes, almost 14 actually. A little bit longer than I wanted to, probably some pauses in there, but I don't care. You guys know when I, I'm passionate about this team. I bleed for the Jets. You know I love them. They're my, my babies. I love the Jets. They've been my go-to comfort for so long. I love watching hockey. I love this team. And that's why I'm so critical of them. I want them to be good. I want them to play at the level that we all know they're capable of. Let me just say what Canuck Clay, a couple of Canucks fans, including myself, a lot of people have emphasized about the Canucks going into this season. That team that was on the verge of beating Vegas in Game 7, that almost went to the Western Conference Final, that team is still there mostly. Yeah, Tyler Toffoli was gone. Yeah, they lost some key pieces back there. But the big young guys, Thatcher Demko, Lettuce Pedersen, JT Miller, Brock Besser, those guys are there. But Quinn Hughes, excuse me, how could I forget? They're there still. They just needed a spark. And they've got one. When will we get our spark? Will it be too late? Will this team even care at that point when we get it? Will we ever get it? I'm starting to lose faith a little bit. At least I've got a Bombers win to celebrate. 
back-to-back Grey Cup champions. But at the end of the day, all I wanted for my Jets to be successful and succeed and play at the level that we all know they can play at. That's all I want. So with all that being said, peace, love, and positivity. Have a great rest of your night. And pray for a Christmas miracle that we can have some change with this team because nothing's changing anytime soon that it feels like. And I'm sick of it. And you should be too.